Your Singer M3330 Making the Cut sewing machine has 23 stitches that provide 97 different stitch applications. Let's take a look at a few of the stitches as well as how to adjust the length and width for even more creative options. This is your stitch selector dial and you turn it to choose the stitch you want to sew. Each time you turn the dial, you can feel it click into position. Find the stitch you want to sew and turn the dial until it clicks in place under this marking on the main part of the machine. You'll notice that there is a gray stitch and also a blue stitch, so how do you know which stitch is going to sew? You use the stitch length dial for that. The dial is set in this gray zone for the gray stitch, or I can turn the dial to the blue S for the blue stitches. Let's start with the straight stitch, which is in the gray zone. The stitch length dial goes from zero to four, but I'm going to set it around two and a half, which is the average stitch length. Let's sew a seam. Place your fabric under the presser foot, lining up the edge of the fabric with the seam guideline that you want. I'm going to use the 5 8 seam marking like you find on a lot of commercial dress patterns. Lower the presser foot, and let's sew a few stitches. Now press and hold the reverse lever to sew a few stitches in reverse. Release the lever and then continue sewing to the end of the fabric. When you reach the end of the fabric, press and hold the reverse lever and sew a few stitches in reverse again. The reverse stitches will prevent the threads from coming undone as you continue working on your project. Turn the hand wheel toward you until the needle is in the highest position and then just starts to descend. Raise the presser foot lifter, remove your work, and cut the threads on your thread knife. Using the thread knife will leave your thread tails long enough so that your needle doesn't come unthreaded when you start to sew again. You can sew stitches shorter or longer depending on where you set the stitch length dial. Stitches set at 3 or 4 might be used for top stitching threads. Shorter stitches, such as at a 2 or a 1, might be used for lightweight threads and fabrics. For straight stitch, you can change the position of your needle using the stitch width dial. Setting it to 5 puts the needle in the far left position and 0 brings the needle back to center. Now let's turn the dial to a zigzag stitch. With a zigzag stitch, I can use both the length and width dials in various combinations. To show this, I'll set the dial to an average stitch length setting, which is around 2.5 and I'll turn the width to its widest setting, which is 5. Let's sew to see what that looks like. I can turn the stitch width dial narrower to get a different result. This could be used as a seam finish. Let's see what that looks like. After you sew your last few stitches, don't forget to turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle is in its highest position and just begins to descend. Raise your presser foot, cut your threads on your thread knife, and here we have our zigzag stitch in various widths. Another really useful stitch is the multi-step zigzag. That is here on the dial. I'll put the stitch width at 5 and the stitch length at 1. Now let's sew. This could be used decoratively or even as elastic insertion and we'll try that next. As you come to the end, turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle's in its highest position and just beginning to descend. Raise your presser foot, trim your threads, and here's our multi-step zigzag stitch. Now let's try this with elastic insertion. Pull the elastic taut from both sides as you sew. And again, as you get to the end, turn the hand wheel towards you so your needle's in the highest position just beginning to descend. Raise your presser foot and trim your threads. And here we have our nicely inserted elastic. Notice that next to the multi-step zigzag stitch, there is a blue stitch on the dial, and this is the honeycomb stitch. To sew that, we'll leave the stitch width at 5, but turn the stitch length to the blue S to sew. 
this can also be used decoratively or for elastic insertion and other stitch applications. As you come to the end of your row, make sure you turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle's in its highest position just begins to descend. Raise your presser foot and trim your threads. And here's what a honeycomb stitch looks like. Now let's try this with elastic insertion. As you sew, continue holding the elastic taut from both sides and adjust your fabric as needed. As you come to the end of your row of stitches, turn the hand wheel towards you until the needle's in its highest position and so it just begins to descend. Raise your presser foot Cut your threads on the thread knife. And here you see your inserted elastic with a decorative honeycomb stitch. And here's what the other side looks like. Now let's try the pico hem stitch, which is this one here. You can use this to sew interesting hem edges. I'm sewing this on some trico. Sew this with the hem turned under and experiment with the stitch length and width for the fabric you're using. As you get to the end of your row, raise your needle to its highest position so it just is barely descending. Raise your presser foot and trim your threads. And here's a pico hem stitch. Let's try one more. The slant over edge stitch is here next to the pico stitch on the stitch selector dial. And we'll turn the stitch length dial to the S. This is a great stitch to sew a seam and a seam finish at the same time. As you come to the end, turn your hand wheel toward you a couple times so that the needle's in its highest position and just beginning to descend. Raise your presser foot, trim your threads, and when you're finished, you simply trim away the excess seam allowance with a pair of scissors. And here's your slant over edge stitch for a nice seam finish. For more information about your machine stitches and how to use them, check out the Stitch Applications Guide on the Singer website.